Keemstar has made me more money than any person. You, Wings, and Boogie. Doing a podcast is not out of the question. <laughs> Keem is here, and oh. Keem has said that he will be respectful, and and uh, he would love to talk. I think this is a tremendous opportunity to bury whatever hatchet or whatever it is you guys have and, and mend a fence. I think this is a tremendous opportunity. Are you open to that? If you want him on the show to talk, I'm not doing business with this man under any circumstances. Yeah, you establish that. That's fine. That's not yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, I'm not trying to broker a business deal or anything like that, but but if are you open to talking with him now? I'm curious what he even wants to talk about. I'm not being on his stuff. I'm, I refuse. Okay. So. Well, let's. Okay, I'm gonna. So it's such a bad play, right? So you're here. okay with? I understand who I understand who Keemstar is as a person. I've dealt with him for a decade, right? But like Keemstar knows how to make fucking money. Like, and Keemstar is one of the few people on the internet I've ever dealt with that says he'll make you money and actually go out there and make you fucking money. Like, I don't think Keem gets enough bonus for that. Like, like Keemstar has, like, this whole, like, persona that he's a bullshitter and stuff like that. But Keemstar, like, if you go pound for pound, Keemstar has made me more money than any person on the internet. Him coming on to talk. As long as he's not going to sit here and insult me or, do, you know, you guys have already asked me so many questions. I don't want him right. to interrogate I don't want to click live because no, I want to be able to pause it when I can. That's not, right. I mean, Keem. We'll get there. You know, I, I, he's watching, obviously. So it's like, that's not the case. We're, we're the interviewers. He, 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 and he just said it. He agrees. Yeah, he agrees. So, so look, we're going to bring him on. And, and like I said, I think this, this is not a tremendous opportunity for friction. This is an opportunity to build a bridge. So let's do this real quick. Keemstar, welcome back to the show. How are you? Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And Phil, thank you uh, for letting me on to talk to you directly. Um, I do mean what I what I said here in the chat, that I will be respectful. Uh, I'm not here to interrogate you. King Star's lost a lot I, of weight. I desperately want to represent my point of view in this situation between me and you. Um, because what I've heard listening to this podcast or this interview or whatever you want to call it, is you describing problems that you have in your life, um, paying bills, being harassed by, you know, your detractors or whatever. And I actively went out of my way to solve major problems in your life. And me and you are not friends. In fact, before I put together this business opportunity for you, mm -hmm. me and you were fighting back and forth. It started mm -hmm. with you on your podcast out of nowhere um reacting to me retiring when i turned 40 and you said well that guy's evil and you know all these horrible stuff and blood money whatever you said about me because you don't you don't like my show drama and many of your detractors uh picked up on right away that the reason why you don't like my show and you don't support me is because we covered the the fapping uh situation in 2016. Well, that, that's that is completely the really untrue i oh, oh, dude okay. you covered it go ahead respond though okay. Okay. You covered it fairly. You didn't even really harp on it. One of your guys contacted me behind the scenes, said, do you have anything else to add? Do you want to be on the show? I was like, no, you covered it fairly. I don't think you were unfair at all. That's not the case. Thank you, because I don't think I was unfair either. You know? No, not at all. Who told you that? That's bullshit. That's, you want, that's the detractors that's making what, shit up. That, I didn't know. Everybody, I don't everybody need it. jumped to that do conclusion with me. why you had such a hateful, uh, you know, response to me retiring was because of that because no. we have no previous history phil correct I, i've i've never talked to you the only interactions i've ever had with you is just covering this one story about you mm -hmm. and just you know this is a great example of why i wanted to bring you on because there's clearly a, a miscommunication somewhere along the lines right clearly so you know uh phil thought keem started this keem started thought phil did this all right so are we we're in a better we're in a better place, which is great. So to move on from that, you sure. know, um, I see a clip and it's on Phil's stream. He's reacting to my retirement and he's saying I'm this horrible, evil person, da 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 da, and he doesn't support me. And I responded. Hold on, hold on, Kim. Kim, is that is that true, Phil? I don't like, know. I'm sure I've criticized him. I don't know specifically what he's talking about yet. Okay, continue. I, I don't I don't know exactly what was said. I'm going off of memory, but it was something along those lines. The clip gets sent to me by multiple people. What, what, what um, would, so I, I would I say to, to this? Phil, this got the only to do with thing me. I know about Phil is him being a lolcow, right? Him 
on stream begging for money to pay rent and stuff like that. That's all I know about him. So I responded to him on Twitter, which I thought was pretty clever um, in gaming terms, terms. And I explained to him that like, we are roughly the same age. We've been doing YouTube for like 15 years each. We started at the same time and I'm retiring now and I don't ever have to work again. So I have completed this video game of YouTube. And I said to Phil, you're still on level one. All right. You're still on level one and you're restarting, you know, level one over and over again. Like, Yo, trust me, I tried to make that money. Longer. I was down still at the point where you're begging people on stream to, to pay your bills and whatnot. And I thought that was a good response. Right. Even though I am talking trash and, you know, we, we got a little drama going on for Twitter and whatnot. Dude, you know, DSP I thought never that I was down actually it. giving you good advice. And. You know, well, did, did, yeah, I was going to say that that um, is that advice or is that more like cause I, in, in, that, in that text felt form, like a, a, a backhanded smack uh, right. with, you know, Internet Twitter battles, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But it's also advice. Right. My point in those Twitter uh, videos was that Phil needs to do something different. You know, imagine you're playing a video game. You're on level one and you try the same technique over and over again. All right. And you're dying and you have to restart the level over like you're never going to beat level one. And that's the situation that Phil has been in. Right. And I, I Phil, what are your thoughts on that? Do you do you feel like there's any truth to that or do you feel like that Keemstar is that's 100 percent you know, true out of his way to uh, kind of make you look a fool? Uh, 100 percent true what Keemstar is saying. And like, I can't say something. I'm stuck on level one, too. But. You know, like I'm more willing to try to climb to level two than Phil is. Like Phil wants to, Phil wants to basically. Phil is what, forty now? I think Phil's older than I am. I think Phil's in his forties or or close to it. And um, Phil thinks that you know he's going to slowly claw his way out of two hundred fifty thousand dollar debt one new game release at a time. You know, it's never going to happen. Like. Like, I understand that, you know, treading water, which you know, what I've been doing for the last six years is like treading water. But at least I'm like, I can't say I'm debt free anymore, but like I was debt free for a while. You know, like I have a handle on my debt, right? Like I don't have to file bankruptcy or do anything like that. Whereas Phil, like I, he filed bankruptcy and I don't feel like he's changed his ways at all. Like the fact is that he filed, he had to file bankruptcy because he had so many poor choices like having two houses at other ends of the country, like, you know, spending $40,000 on, like, a WWE Champions game, which I 100% believe he did that. Like, I'm not in some realm where, like, that did not happen. Right? Like, in, in my... Because in my opinion, like, and I don't know Phil from a hole in the ground, I guess, but, like, from the outside looking in, to me, Phil is a... is a more than casual drinker that is addicted to gambling. Right. And like everything he does in his life is centered around being able to gamble. But he wants to stay in a moral high ground. Like if you like to gamble so much, why not you go the XQC route where gambling companies will pay you money? Like like I know White Boy made a lot of money off gambling streams. And, you know, you have complete people that live lavishly just off the kickback they get from gambling streams. Well, first of all, you know, the best way to give life advice is to, you know, say it in an insulting way, for sure. I mean, that's very, makes everyone very receptive to it, correct? You know, right. sure well, do a fair nice point, but slab, slap it let, him, let him finish, game on Twitter. Um, is there some truth to it? Yes. Okay. But here's the thing if you have a criticism of me, then criticize me fairly in a way where, you know, maybe I have a chance to have a conversation. Instead, you just go to your platform and you say something nasty about me on there. I'm a tiny little guy, okay? When I say something on my stream, who hears it? A couple hundred people? Yes, my detractors then echo it. They extrapolate it all over the internet. Boom, it's amplified, correct? But I'm the little guy. You are a big guy, Keem. You're huge. You have a giant reach on the internet. Do you not understand that the stuff that you say in mm. is replicable? I don't think Phil understands. Because Kim, Kimstar made it clear just on this podcast alone that they started at the same time. Because like when Phil was Phil was bigger than Keemstar for a while, 
because I remember when Machinima first got started, I was in the second wave of Machinima people, and so was Phil. Me and Phil got our Machinima contracts at the same time. Originally, people like Blame Truth and like, um, what was that dude's guy's name? It was a British guy that was very, very fucking bad at video games. Uh, Ken Burton. Ken Burton. Like, that was the initial wave, and then me and Phil came in on the second wave of, like, Machinima contracts. And, like, we were both, like, top 250 YouTube channels in the world at one point. And, like, me personally, I know I didn't, I didn't innovate. You know, I tried to... I tried to put my eggs in multiple baskets, had multiple business ventures fail, and you know, and just getting fucking depression, right? Sitting in your house playing video games for five or six years in a row and being overweight is not gonna is not is not conducive of good mental health. Right? So like, you know, it's my fucking fault. You know, I should have made better choices and took better care of myself. But regardless, like I feel like Phil is completely ignoring Keem's advice or trying to, to detract from Keemstar's advice. But I would want to point out that Phil, at one point, had a massive head start over DJ Keemstar. And Ke DJ Keemstar still came back. Questions for everyone around you. You're, you seem to be someone that you don't, you're not self-aware. You don't understand that when you say something like that. Now, I have to live with that shit. For months on end, I get, ah, ha, ha, you're on level one. Ha, 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 Phil, level one. Yo, you've been for 15 years. You're just on level one. Do you think I need that? I already have enough shit in my life going on. So much stuff. I don't need Mr. Big Time punching down on me, which is what you do. That's why people don't like you, man. I didn't like, how, see. Do you it. not understand that? I, I didn't see it that way. I saw a clip of you talking all kinds of shit on me, like unprovoked, and I no, just this, responded. This is not going to be the end of the field. That, that, there's nothing giving you a nothing new came out from what I've seen. But I've only watched Anyhow, like the last after that hour or so. Place, um, months went by. And this bothered me because I saw the solution the entire time that Phil needed to do something different. All right. I am a person that recognizes entertainment. I really, really do. You got to understand, Phil, you have haters, you have distractors. So do I. But I have more. I have more than uh, Wings of Redemption, mm. DSP and Boogie combined. I have way more haters, but I'm still successful and I still have new business opportunities and I'm still making money. I was supposed to retire a year ago and I'm still doing new Who's stuff Darius? And, and being successful in this platform because I understand this business very, very well. And even though you have that hate, you know, they are viewers. They are your customers. The detractors are your customers. The haters are your customers and they're more loyal than the people that give you money that donate on your stream. The people yeah, that hate that you are way that you're more talking loyal. about. That's like you can't pay for that shit. I mean, look at how many people are here. Twenty five hundred people are here. I, it's just it, it, it's you have a legitimate fan base. Those haters. Yeah, I'm working with Kingstar. Where do you think the boxing like match you came from? Are your fans, and I wanted to solve this issue for not just you, but Wings and Boogie. I looked at all of you guys. You're lol cows, right? You have more haters than like supporters, right? But really, they're all fans. They are all fans. They're all obsessed with you and watching your content nonstop. The solution really is to get the three of you to do a podcast. All right. Those haters are going to watch. They're going to absolutely love that these three guys have come together to make content. Now, between the three of you, you guys don't have the business sense to like really figure this out and make this thing actually happen. But I do. All right. And you guys don't even understand how valuable valuable you are as individuals, as entertainers, because you look at the numbers and you're looking at everything and like, oh, well, I've fallen off. And, you know, that's the mindset that you have. Right. But I have a different mindset for each and one of you that you guys are amazing entertainers, just not in the way that you want to be, right? You're lol cows, but there's so much value there. By putting the three of you together, and you know, each one of you would own 25% of this podcast, all right? We never got to have this conversation, so I, I do wanna have it now, even though I know you're not gonna do it, all right? I would also own 25%. I would do the business aspect of it. I've had many success selling podcasts um, to exclusive deals with Spotify and other companies multi-million dollar deals all right i wanted to put the three of you together for this show i would do the business side of the things and i knew that 
all three of you would be in a situation where you didn't really trust me or you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work and you'd have a lot of doubts. So I was just going to take my own money and and take one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, give you each just to start off before we even filmed an episode, 50 grand up front to let you know that I was serious and I believe in this concept and this idea. Now, I call Boogie first. I instantly get on the phone with Boogie, all right? He loves the idea. He understands it. He gets it. He reaches out to Wings. Wings is down. And now it's time to talk to DSP. Boogie, the way I understand it, called you, contacted you, and told you what was going on, right? Yeah, I agree to it. He DM'd me on Twitter. And we I 100% agree to it. And, and he told you that I want to do a podcast. With you friends, know how much right? money I've lost uh, out yes, from shit like I this? No I can't. 50, we 50K is a bu- drop in the bucket. We never talked, but he said that there was this idea for a podcast, correct? Like, look at the so PK guys. Know. Like, there's so, two so multimillionaires so on PK. Didn't tell you. We all he started at the same time. He and, and Wings had spoken to Keen, mm-hmm. and that Keen wanted to do a podcast with all three of us. No money or anything was discussed. He just say, you know, he wants to do a podcast with all three of us. I didn't know that's what Keen was trying to reach out to me. I, I said maybe that's what it was. I didn't know because I never spoke with him. Phil, hearing this, hearing this, and and hearing the uh, the business opportunity that was laid out. I don't even know if it's still there or not. But uh, what are your thoughts right now, given what Keem has said to you? Thoughts like yeah. you mean? Yeah, yeah just, you just as, as he's as he's laid this out. Like lay, lay out your feelings based on what. Keemstar has, has laid out for you. I have I have absolutely no problem doing anything with Boogie or Wings. In fact, you know, I had the conversation with, with uh, Boogie back and forth a little bit more later in the year. Would he be interested in maybe doing a podcast with me or h- me behind his show or whatever? You know, whatever it may be. These guys, you know, I covered. I did a react about Wings last year about his documentary. Um, you know, that me doing a collab with them just doing a fun podcast is not out of the question for the future.